Hey folks, my name is Chris Wessel, and today we're going to be tying a camouflage bomber or a camo bomber. Um, we've already pre-cut all the hair as it takes quite a while. Um, we've even pre-cut our wings. When you're uh, pre-cutting your hair on these bombers, um, it's important to remember that you need to stagger the colors. You can't keep the same colors in the same order on each clump just because you'll tend to pick it up the same way every time and then you'll just end up tying the colors in the same way. There won't be a really good mixture. Um, yeah, so. We're gonna tie our wings in first. We're using white wings today. And we just size those up the same way we always do. And Right about there. Try to get about half uh, the shank covered on these. Make sure we have enough room for our head. Yeah, that's good. And we're using a bit of a short piece of cap tail. So I might just put a little dab of head cement there and that's just to help anchor it off even better. I do this from time to time. It doesn't affect the uh, floating capabilities of the bomber. And we're also going to use a white tail on this. Try to match that up with your front wing. After you get a couple wraps in, you can just have a look to see if it's roughly the same, and it is. These wings are a little bit larger than normal, but uh, it's going to fish all the same. So I'm also using a brown hackle on these and that's a rooster saddle so i'm going to tie that in before just because it uh, seems to give me a better body when i do that and that should be good there so we just get this hackle out of our way now we're going to tape down the front and back. And the purpose of this is to keep it out of our way when we're trimming and if we're going to singe the body on this, it protects the wings and the hackle during that process. These camo bombers, uh, I seen somebody post one a long time ago, years ago now, and uh, Thought it was a really cool idea, so I kind of put my own little spin on it, but uh, they actually work really well. The, the issue with these is that they, uh, they're really hard to pick up on the water surface. So I'm just putting something here to catch the trimmings. So we're gonna take one of these clumps that I showed you the picture of, and we just tie these in like we would a normal bomber. Basically, when you're making these clumps up before you start tying, uh, you need to keep in mind that every color you put into one clump is part of, you know, is only one fourth of, of that clump. So you need to use smaller clumps with each color. I don't know if that sounds confusing or not, but um, basically, you got to keep in mind that your normal clump size and, and what one fourth of that is because you're putting four different colors in each clump. And you can tell that you're uh, getting a non-uniform color mixture, which is what you want. I was just saying that these are, they actually work really well. It's hard when when the water is any bit turbulent because uh, you can't actually see them and you know you don't know if there's a fish rising on your bomber or not so I either keep my rod tip up or I do a second method which we're going to do in this video is tie a uh, hot head on it so a fluorescent head and basically you're just watching out for that fluorescent head on the water. 
There's a lot of prep time involved with these bombers because laying out each individual clump with four separate pieces of hair does take quite a bit longer. But other than that, it's just like tying a normal bomber. I'm using green, brown, black, and white in these. It's more of like an army camo, but I've tried it with uh, different ones before, like a Swiss camo and uh, actually a muddy girl camo with hot pink. It was uh, pretty cool. This gives you a lot of room to be creative. And we're still uh, compressing these clumps as we put them onto the back. That's gonna give you a nice tight body. You might notice too from my first videos that I'm cutting this access off here. And I learned that method from uh, Wally Halloran. And uh, it's nice, it seems like it really comes around the hook a lot better and you don't have trapped uh, fibers like you do when you leave it long. If you haven't tried this method yet, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely worth giving it a shot. And you just leave your scissors in hand while you're doing this so they're readily available. It doesn't take too much time away from the process. So it's important to have scissors that fit around your fingers. I'm using uh, Dr. Slick uh, scissors today but there's a pair of shore scissors that fit really well around my fingers as well and there are a few brands that don't however and I don't actually have big fingers so I couldn't imagine if you did this is really starting to come together I think we'll do probably one more and just see how I'm pulling the fibers back as we go. That helps. Got a new microphone from uh, a friend out west he actually seen the videos and he said he liked what I was doing and he had an extra one and he sent me a lapel mic to try so I really like it so far hopefully post-processing proves that it's good as well all right so we're just gonna flip that wing up leaving the tape on and we're just gonna tie this off and snip that off. You can actually put that tape back over and give it a good fluff because we're gonna go into trimming now. All right, so we're gonna do our trimming. And we're just gonna come in behind here and as we always do with bombers, we just kinda trim a little piece down to the shank and we use this as a guideline. Get rid of that access stuff and we start our trimming process. So we're trying to get our scissors to point to that guideline we just cut. And your first initial cut, take your time, make sure you got your line right, and then follow suit as you rotate if you have a uh, rotating vise. These colors are so cool to see when you start trimming. It's important too when you're making those clumps in this pattern that you keep the colors in the clump together. You don't mix them around because it gives you more of that camouflage look. Uh, 
like the colors stay blotchy within the fly. They stick together as you spin them on. Tied these for a buddy of mine two years ago. And uh, he actually said, he said, I, he said, the fish were going crazy for it. He said, or at least I think they were. He said, I found out when, uh, when I went to cast and my rod was tight, he said, there was a fish on and I didn't even know. He said, because there's fish rising everywhere around us, Atlantic salmon. And he said, it was almost impossible to see when they took your fly. And he said, you can't see the fly once you cast it. <laughs> so, uh, it's a good pattern, but I guess it could be a bit of a curse at the same time. Not a good one for low light conditions. Just doing some fine tuning here. But we're gonna do a bit more of that after we shape the front and back. So we're gonna come in the back. Just trim that access up there. And we'll come to the front. We trim that like we do. It's gonna be a normal style of bomber body that we do. And then we round that off. All right, I think we're gonna singe this body a bit. Actually, no, we're not. We'll just leave it as is. Maybe just come in and clean it up a little bit more. And I'm basically just watching the horizon for anything sticking out. It's actually uh, harder with these camo bodies to pick out the uh, uneven parts. That's good enough. Now we can remove our tape. All right, there we go. Try to do that carefully in the back so we don't rip out our hackle. And we'll get our thread ready to tie in this hackle. The brown hackle really pops on these, but you know what? It's, it's fun to play around with some colors, so give it a shot. Oh yeah, 
this was a nice length for this. This is going to be a nice fishing fly. Get rid of that axis. I don't know why I threw that out. There's still lots there. Save that. And then we just bring our wing back. And just kind of prop it up with some thread. You can build that head up a little bit. Beauty. We're gonna go in and clean up a couple parts on this. We're actually, uh, I'm gonna take off a few of these threads because I forgot that we're gonna put a hot head on it. And we don't wanna to create too much bulk. So we'll tie this off. And we're going to use some glow bright in like a fluorescent orange. Hopefully that'll help us see this on the water. Actually, I know for a fact it does. So And then you can finish off. I put a little dab here just on my ends, just to secure where you tied it in. And then, oh my goodness, this stuff is just rushing out. And I'm gonna finish this head off with a couple coats of uh, Venyard's head cement later on. But there you have it. That is a camo bomber. They work well for Atlantic salmon and brook trout in Newfoundland and Labrador. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. I hope it helped. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please uh, do so if, you, if you'd like to. If not, that's cool too. Just like having you here and I hope, uh, again, I hope this helped. Have a nice day. Thank you.